Hello flute player friends and band directors. Wanted to talk about warm-up routines. Warm-up routines are, I think, really individual kind of things. Not a one-size-fits-all type thing at all. Um, I have a pretty extensive warm-up routine that in which I attempt to address all of the different aspects of sound production on the flute as well as finger technique. Um, on a good day my warm-up routine takes me 45 minutes. Um, on a day that's not so hot or that I get a bunch of interruptions it's usually closer to an hour. Um, the reason that I started doing that was because when I was in my early 20s um, I obsessively practiced the aspects of my tone and technique that I felt insecure about and really didn't do too much with the stuff that I thought was okay. And I had some lessons, geez, I want to say maybe the summer after my first or second year playing at BPO um, with Marina Piccinini who is one of my favorite flute players and she looked at my warm-up routine and basically was like this is awful and you know we gotta change this and she added but basically what she told me which I now now tell to my own students is it's better to practice each aspect of your tone or your technique separately or as separately as you can um, because that way it gets your full concentration and you can actually get something accomplished. If you are going to play scales and try to achieve the most beautiful tone and super even, really polished fingers and play them in different articulations so you're practicing your articulation, you know, by the time your attention is divided that many different ways, you might as well just skip it and go to your repertoire because that's what happens in your repertoire. At any one given point, you could be trying to focus on, you know, five different things at once. Um, and it's not really conducive. It's not really conducive to learning and it's not really conducive to um, being able to make real progress on each aspect. Um, so I am going to show you some of the things that I use in hopes that you will be able to look at yourself and the time that you have to practice and you know the exercises that seem to you like yeah that seems like something that I should do or no you know I already do something that's real similar to that and I think I like that better. So. I start out every practice session with long tones. Um, I play my long tones four at a time. You should do long tones on every note of the instrument. Within reason, like I don't think you need to go past like high C. Um, anyway, I play them with vibrato. Some people play them with no vibrato. Honestly, I think that's up to a person's discretion. You know, what you think is more helpful for you. Um, I'm just going to go through and show you some of the books that I use. They're all very old and like almost falling apart. So this is a book that, well I think anyone who goes to college for flute will have this book. Um, this book is all about tone. Um, now I don't, besides the long tones, the exercise from this book that I really like, and I guess I can't, for me this is on page 11, I don't know if there's a different edition of this since mine. This is practice in playing low notes loud. And this exercise I do every day. Um, there are lots of other exercises in this book that I think are useful, you know, for different people at different times in the course of your schooling and your career. Um, another book that I think is really terrific, and my pages are uh, falling out of this, 20 Exercises and Etudes. This is by the same 
flutist, Marcel Moyes. Um, this book has many exercises that I do every day that I practice. There are big slurs in here. There are um, chromatic exercises, uh, diminuendoing on high notes, which is really hard on the flute. Um, there are octave exercises, down and up. I think this is a terrific book that honestly I think every flute player should have. It's It's got a lot in it that I think is very valuable. Now, this is another book that I practice out of every day. When I was in my early 20s, I took a year of jazz lessons, and that is how I came across this book. Um, this book goes through, and you know, you can use it for any instrument because every page that he has here, the exercises are written in both, uh, both clefs here. So these are, ex these are scales and modes that, you know, there's kind of a lot on each page. I spend a month on a page and then flip to the next one. And what I like about this book is that it really gives you every different combination of notes in every different order. It really helps. Now, this book takes me, I think, almost two years to get through it, um, taking each page for a month. Um, and honestly, every time I get back to the beginning, I notice that I'm better off with my fingers than I was the time before. Um, that is a book that I would not recommend using until you feel very solid with both your major and all your minor scales up to your highest notes. College students, you should be going up to high D at least. If high D is hard for you, which it was for me, I started practicing up to E because I thought, well, maybe D will feel a little easier if I go up to E. Um, but I would say college students who are going to school for music, you got to go up to at least D. Um, if you are in middle school, you know, I guess it depends on how you're doing with your scales. I would say try to do um, your C major and your B major from the lowest notes, you know, the low ones, up three octaves. And then, you know, you can take the other ones at two, at, uh, two octaves. If, you know, once you find that that's fairly easy, then I would take them up to high B or see if you feel comfortable. Um, I also have a lot of exercises that I've just been taught over the years by various teachers um, to work on changing registers, to work on um, my dynamics so that they're really noticeable, you know, so hopefully so that my loud and soft are far apart instead of, you know, not so different, try to make them as different as possible. Um, I have different finger exercises that I do. Um, there are a few of them in, uh, well, you know what, it's in my file cabinet because I have them memorized, but it's that Julius Baker book. Um, I'll put a link to it on there. Um, but I recommend, if you are a kid and you're in, middle school, or even high school, if you're not super serious about the flute, but you want to sound as good as you can, I would say at least do some scales, long tones first, and then work on scales up to the highest notes that you can. And I know everybody hates minor scales. They're really confusing, I feel like, for a while. Um, that's one of the best things that you can do for yourself. And depending on your goals with the flute, the more serious you are, the more important it is to integrate into your daily warm-up routine exercises that address as many aspects of tone and technique as you can fit in the time that you have. This gets a lot harder once you're in college, if, especially if you're trying to play flute, but you're not majoring in flute. That's tough. You know, so you might find that you need to divide your exercises up and you know one day that you practice do long tones and then 
take however many off your list that you can and then the next day that you practice after your long tones you know hit a few more as long as eventually you are getting to everything you will move forward so you don't need to play every scale up to the highest note every day in fact I think for a lot of people that's very unrealistic so um, when you start if you have five minutes to practice scales maybe you practice C major and F major or maybe you practice C major and A minor and that's it and you work on those for the week and then the next week you move on to the other two A minors if you did you know C major and A natural minor maybe the next week you move on to A melodic and harmonic minors or if you want to go through your majors you know maybe work on C and F and then go on to B flat and E flat the system that you use doesn't really matter as long as you are getting to everything and any of my students who's been to my place knows like this is how crazy I kind of get about this. I take these exercises and divide them up and then I work on one part each day depending on how much time depending on how much time I have. Um, anyway, I have a list of a lot of books that you can reference for warm-up exercises, tone technique, and everything in this book that I wrote for flute players. Um, no-nonsense guide to becoming a professional flutist. I think that having a good, a good warm-up is one of the most important aspects of becoming a great flutist. And I have an index here of different types of exercises and where you can find them, which books you can find them in. Um, and then I have exercises that I learned from teachers that I have explained here a little bit, you know, that, that are not, not, from, uh, not from books. So I hope that that is a help to anyone who's trying to get themselves a, you know, a good warm-up routine going. Um, I think the most important thing is to try to be flexible. And I feel like for a lot of us, that's really hard to do. If you have an AP, a type A personality like I do, sometimes that can be tough to, you know, cut yourself some slack. But the more flexible you can be with yourself, the more able you will be to adjust and then to find the right combination of things that are the best for you. Um, I generally recommend to my students to spend half of their practice time on tone and technique. So if you practice for a half an hour a day, Try to spend 15 minutes working on scales and your long tones and, you know, whatever else you feel that you can fit into that 15 minutes. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps for everybody who's uh, trying to get their tone and technique rolling. So here's my book. It's on Amazon. And I will see everybody soon. Bye.